but I will make that happen. I see it's 9.01, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, and we're gonna start with roll call. So Taylor, would you call the roll? What happens? Um, Juliet Ballard? Yes. Oh, remember to say where you're calling from. Dexter, Michigan. Marta Larson. Um, present, I'm uh, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present, calling from Milan, Michigan. Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson. Jennifer Green. Present, from City of Ypsilanti, Michigan. Phyllis Herzig. Present, calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Jennifer Heckendorn. Present, calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Brenda McKinney. Present, calling from Superior Township. Jasmine Cooper. Present, calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Annie Somerville. Present, City of Ypsilanti. Um, and we have Allison Foreman. Yep, Allison, I'm, I'm present from Ypsilanti Township. And uh, Bruce Astrian. We do have a quorum. I see that Elizabeth Thompson is here. Did you call her name? I did. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth Thompson from Ypsilanti Township. So who it was it that was did not respond with this absent? It was Elizabeth at first. Okay. And then I apologize for uh, having some trouble joining today. It's not just a Marie thing, apparently. <laughs> So um, the next thing I would like to do is, because we have a new uh, commissioner, uh, I would like to do some introductions before we move into election of officers. So um, welcome, Allison. I don't know if you're able to turn on your video. I can't. I actually just did an update to my computer, and now my camera does not want to play nicely. Not in a good mood, huh? Nope. Just a few sentences about yourself. Uh, my name is Allison Foreman. I am from Ypsilanti Township, uh, District 5. I've lived here for about 15 years. Um, I've been in the nonprofit field for 17 years. Um, recently just um, left Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels, where I was the CEO for 11 years. And I am now the CEO at Mobile Meals of Toledo. Okay, so I'm going to go around the group and ask each person to also introduce themselves so Allison knows who she's dealing with. I'll start with myself. I'm a semi-retired education consultant, um, and I am active in the Whitmore Lake community. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of Northfield's Human Services, and that's the organization that's working to establish a health clinic in Whitmore Lake. Um, Elizabeth, would you go next? Uh, I'm Elizabeth Thompson. I am from Ypsilanti Township, um, District 5. Justin Hodge is, uh, is my commissioner. And I'm a retired State of Michigan employee. Uh, my last position was as the program director for the Michigan Women's Commission. Uh, I've uh, served for approximately... Uh, 15 years now, both in my positions in state government and then as a, a individual member of the State Advisory Council on Aging. Okay, Marie, would you go next? Marie Gress, um, Milan, Michigan. I um, co-chair the Healthy Aging Collaborative. I do consulting in the aging sector for nonprofits, and I'm currently the executive director at WAVE in Western Washtenaw County. Phyllis, would you go next, please? Hi, I'm Phyllis Herzig. I'm a retired geriatric social worker. Um, one of my volunteer activities for the last 15 years has been um, as a mediator and uh, restorative justice facilitator. Thank you. Uh, Jasmine, would you go next, please? Good morning. My name is Jasmine. Uh, I'm a third year PhD candidate at the University of Michigan. 
Uh, so I study psychology and specifically uh, my research focuses on the intersection of health disparities and disparities in Alzheimer's risk in older adults. Great, Jennifer Green. Good morning. I am uh, a future retiree, Re be retiring soon from Unified HIV Health and Beyond, where I work as a uh, supervisor case manager. But my favorite job is that being a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Margaret, would you go next, please? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Margie Reynolds. I am a retired nurse. Um, I <clears throat> was, um, my specialty was cardiac nursing. And, um, but the last several years before retirement, I was in the Trinity Health System, um, uh, working on evidence-based practice. And I was on the Glacier Hills Board of Directors for 11 years, I think. Thank you. I'm Brenda. Welcome, Allison. Um, I'm Brenda McKinney. I'm a former treasurer of Superior Township. I retired um, May of 22. I also serve on the uh, Washtenaw County Parks Commission and an advisory council for the Dollars for Scholars. Thank you. Julia? Hi, my name is Juliet Ballard. I'm currently the owner of JYB Home Care. Prior to that, I taught at the University of Michigan. Um, I published a book on uh, retention and resilience uh, for women in engineering, and I worked there for several years. Prior to that, I was a police officer for the LAPD. And prior to that, I worked for the LA District Attorney's Office. Thank you. Taylor? I'm Taylor Clark. I work with Ageways as administrative um, assistance to the coalition. Um, Ageways is Area Agency on Aging 1B. We did just rebrand, so we are the same uh, nonprofit <laughs> that helps uh, intersect these uh, six counties that is our 1B region. I am currently a planning and grant specialist and assigned to here. Thank you, Jennifer Heckendorn. Hi, I'm Jennifer Heckendorn. I'm a geriatric uh, social worker uh, and therapist. I'm the owner of a private practice in Ann Arbor, primarily serving older adults and uh, caregivers. I'm a lecturer at the University of Michigan um, School of Social Work, and um, I'm on the board of directors for the Backyard Brains Foundation, and I am a veteran of the Navy. Okay, Annie? Hi, Annie Somerville. I'm um, the County Commissioner for District 6, which covers the city of Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti Township and Superior Township. Um, I've been a commissioner since January of 2023. Prior to that, I served on Ypsilanti City Council and I've worked in the State Senate since 2019 for State Senator Jeff Irwin. Thank you, Dina? Hi, I'm Dina Smith. I'm um, with the Center for Health and Research Transformation, that's CHART, and I oversee the Washtenaw Health Initiative, which includes our Healthy Aging Collaborative, and I am a non-voting member of this commission. Great, thank you. And I should note also that Taylor is a non-voting member, and she serves as our secretary um, in terms of taking minutes and, and handling a few things like that. Allison, I need to ask you if you have been sworn in or if you have completed any paperwork for um, becoming a county employee. Um, yes, I did the certification paperwork, but there hasn't been anything else other than that. You and I have not been sworn in. Okay. So um, I just learned that you were appointed um, uh, late on Wednesday. And so I and the person who is responsible for organizing these things for the county is on vacation, so I have no way of finding out how I'm supposed to handle this, but since you have not been sworn in and no one from the county appears to be here to swear you in, I'm going to encourage you to participate, but we will not ask you to vote just because you're not officially a member of the commission until you've been sworn in and I do not have the authority to swear you in. 
Okay. And so I apologize for the uh, confusion that's uh, come up and we will get this straightened out before the next meeting. So thank you for understanding. Um, okay, the next thing on the agenda is the election of officers. So at this time, I would open the floor for self-nominations for the office of chair. Is there anyone here who wishes to put their name in the ring? And if so, please raise your hand. I see one hand. Is there anyone else besides Marie that's interested in uh, throwing their hat in the ring? What do we have a motion? I move that uh, we uh, accept uh, Marie Grouse as chair by acclamation. Support. Thank you, Brenda. So it's been moved by uh, Elizabeth and supported by Brenda that Marie be elected by acclamation. Um, I believe we have to do a roll call vote. So Taylor, would you call the roll? Julia Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Grass. Am I allowed to say yes or do I abstain? You may vote. <laughs> okay, yes. Margie Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green? Yes. Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn? Yes. Brendan McKinney? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Yes. Annie Somerville? Yes. Motion passes. Hey, Taylor, I just got a text message from someone that they can't get into the meeting because the link has changed. I don't know. Did the link change? I did as well. I got a message from someone as well. I mean, I did change it, but I sent it to Ashley. So if she didn't update it, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. Okay. Is if could you, you email me? To... Could you email yeah. me the public link and then I can just send that to them? Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Is that person Bruce Astrian? Um, yeah, and I think he, yeah, it's him and Monica King, or Monica Prince, sorry. Okay. Um, There's a different Monica that's in my district. All right, so while that's being resolved, um, it, it appears clear that Maria is the new chair of the Commission on Aging, which means I'm going to hand the gavel to her and let her handle um, bringing in Bruce and um, Taylor, please make her co-host so she's able to... Uh, Yep, let me send this out and I will be able to do so. Thank you everybody for putting up with me for chair. And now we're gonna- Thank you. <laughs> Go for it, Marie. Yeah, thank you for oh. your uh, service, Marta, the last few years. Elizabeth? I was just gonna say the same thing, Marta. I know we all appreciate um, the job you've done. You absolutely have gone above and beyond and you got us uh, going as a commission in such an effective way. And we all appreciate you very, very much. Brenda? You know what? I'm so sorry. I don't have, I want to thank uh, Marta for your service and you've done such an excellent job. And, uh, and I'm glad you're going to stay on with us as a member. All right, then moving on to vice chair. Do we have any nominations or self nominations for vice chair? I would like to nominate myself to continue serving until my term is up. Wonderful. Second. We need a motion first. Do you want to make the motion, Margie? Yes, I nominate Brenda McKinney for vice chair. I second that motion. All right, so Taylor, can you do a vote? Yep. Uh, motion. All right, Julia Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Ray Grass. Yes. 
Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Annie Somerville. Yes. Motion passes. Super. Glad to have you uh, continue on in this role, Brenda. And Thank next you. up, secretary. Any nominations or self nominations for secretary? I'll nominate Jennifer. Jennifer. All right. Heckendorn. Jennifer Heckendorn. So she raised her hand. Brenda, would you like to make that a motion? I'll make a motion to nominate Jennifer Heckendorn as secretary. I second. All right. Taylor, will you do a vote? Mm -hmm. Julia Ballard? Yes. Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Jennifer Green? Yes. Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn? Yes. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Yes. Annie Somerville. Yes. Motion passes. Hooray. And thank you to Elizabeth. She was our secretary the last two years. Um, thank you, Elizabeth, for everything that you, you did for us in that role. All right, moving on to public participation. Um, I wanna pause and see where we're at with Bruce and Monica. I Taylor, I got the link that you emailed and I forwarded that to Monica and I gave, I forwarded our agenda to her too so she could click on that. Um, I see that we have Stephanie in the attendees. Um, Annie and Jennifer, have you been getting updates from Bruce and Monica. I, I, I sent them the link okay. um, just over text message. So awesome. I'm not sure if she hasn't responded to me yet. Okay. Great. And there she is. Good. People are coming in now. <clears throat> If you are just joining us, we just reached our public participation. Um, if whoever shared the whiteboard could turn it off. Thank you. Uh, Monica Prince, I see her hand is up in the attendees. Taylor, will you move her up? Okay. Whoops. We hear you, Monica. Okay, good. Um, it just asked me if I wanted to be a panelist. Um, but I just wanted to say, for one thing, it, the organization of this meeting is really getting irritating to, um, you know, because the uh, website is not updated. Um, up until January 1st, I was always getting an agenda of the meeting and I haven't gotten any notice or notice that the um, uh, meeting, uh, Zoom meeting was changed to a different number, just an FYI. But um, also I just wanted to say that I'm all excited because this week, I am going to be hiring another full-time person and um, a, a part-time person. And most of that money is coming from the um, uh, ARPA money that I got for the center, which is really exciting. The um, I do want to say, though, that now my job is to try and sustain that and it's going to be difficult to try and find, um, you know, I don't want these to be one year positions. Um, 
partially because I do want to someday retire and uh, I'd love to be able to leave something behind me. Um, and so I'm, I'm just saying that we really need sustainable uh, funding that will uh, go in year after year and won't, we won't have to sort of um, hunt for it every year, but thank you. Yeah, thank you. Friendly reminder that we hold our comments back to the public until public participation has closed. Anyone else from the public want to raise your hand and make a comment? Going once, going twice. Great. Um, thank you, Monica, for those comments. Um, we also had a, a few of us had some difficulty getting on this morning. Um, and your your comments on, you know, the website needs to be updated and, and all of that needs to be improved. Um, um, so noted and thank you for for making that a public comment. Elizabeth. I just wanted to ask um, both the members of the public who are on the call and if anybody else uh, is uh, paying attention to, to our meeting, that it is wonderful that the ARPA money is uh, having positive effects already. Uh, as a commission, I think we advocated firmly and successfully to make sure that the the money got out to folks. And if I could just ask everyone to, whenever you do something as an organization that was made possible by um, this additional funding, if you could keep a running notes on that, because it will be very powerful in the future to be able to say with some detail um, with the ARPA funding our organization got, we did this, we did this, we did this. And I know all of you who've uh, been in the nonprofit world know that sometimes when you have to write the final report at the end of the year, it's hard to capture all those good things. But if folks could um, emphasize that, I think it will be, uh, very powerful information in the future. Anyone else want to respond? I, yeah, I just want to say I apologize for the Zoom. Um, Zoom meetings were updated just because of the new year and resetting the meeting dates. Um, I will be continuing to work with Ashley to try um, at the, the county to update the website and make sure that she's sending it out to the listserv of interested parties. Great, thank you. Um, all right, next on our agenda is the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Support. Support by Marta. And it's open for discussion. Any discussion on the minutes? Great. Then um, we do a vote. Taylor? Julia Ballard. Approved. Marta Larson. Where are you, Marta? Said yes. Oh, didn't hear you. Sorry, Marie Gress. Yes. Margaret Reynolds. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Annie Somerville. Yes. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right, next on our agenda is identifying some goals for us as a Commission on Aging for 2024. Um, first, I wanna read our bylaws statement um, to kind of ground us in that discussion, and then we can open it up and, and hear what you all would like to see happen in 2024. So the, the commission's purpose is to define the needs of and advocate on behalf of Washtenaw County seniors 60 years of age and older to promote equitable well-being and quality of life opportunities and outcomes. This will include providing recommendations to the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners and relevant stakeholders on the prudent spending of public funds related to senior services. Um, so with that said, I want to open it up for discussion. What are some items you would like to see happen in 2024, presentations you would like to hear in 2024? Um, if you could raise your hands, the so Zoom will put you in order for me. That would be awesome. Dina, I see your hand first. Hi. Um, I have, I'm trying to formulate exactly what I'm thinking, but uh, you know, one of the limitations of many nonprofit agencies is um, that that line between, you know, advocacy and lobbying and um, you know, many agencies, you know, have to be cautious about, you know, what kind of advocacy work they take on because there are, there are you know, rules and regulations against that. So my suggestion, you know, for this group is for this, you know, body to, to be, you know, more of a presence in where it comes to issues that, that need advocacy. And I know that word lobbying is like, is a really like uncomfortable word. So I don't necessarily want to say lobbying, but, you know, I think advocacy is the right, the right way to describe it. But, you know, when there are issues that need, um, to be promoted, you know, with uh, government um, entities or other political decision makers, I do think that this is uh, a core area that this group can be involved in, in the in the sense that you're sort of speaking for the nonprofit agencies that are are you know doing this work and who may not be able to because of their own. Um, you know, organizational limitations, they may not be able to take those same kind of um, steps or put in that type of activity. Yeah, quick comment on that. We are supposed to be advocating on behalf of Washtenaw County seniors, 60 years of age or older. So while I would, um, I just want to reframe, you know, what you were saying as these nonprofits are serving this group and these nonprofits are often the people who are coming to do presentations for us. They're sharing with us the needs of those 60 plus. And so while we do advocacy um, and sharing those recommendations and memos higher up, we need to make sure that we're framing that for the older adults and not directly for the nonprofits, right? We need to, we need to kind of keep the people in mind instead of the agency. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Cool. Yeah. cool. Um, Brenda, your hand went up next, to, but you will put it down. Do you still want to say anything? Um, I want to think about it a little more, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Phyllis, you're next. Um, I, I know this is, uh, how to phrase it. I'm wondering what's taking place or what we can do um, in terms of the ballot proposal for a senior millage. And can that be one of our goals? Yes. And actually, um, I want to spend some time talking about that in a little bit. So if I could put a pin in that for just a few minutes, that would sure. be awesome. Great. Thanks, yeah. Phyllis. Um, Elizabeth. We've heard uh, over the last uh, two years mm -hmm. um, an issue about lack of sustainable resources to provide services for older adults and 
two of the areas that came up most powerfully and frequently were issues related to housing and issues related to transportation. Um, I would, we also have sought information about what the county is spending from its general fund, which they shared. And um, the truth is many of the things we think of as county funded services are really pass through dollars that come through a variety of sources from the federal and state government and get reallocated by the county, but they're not out of the county general fund. So I would like to support what Phyllis had said. I think we have gathered a great deal of information. Part of our charge is to make recommendations to the uh, County Board of Commissioners. And I would like to examine uh, the way in which we can best increase financial support for um, services to adults over age 60 in Washtenaw County. I know you, you're going to be talking, it sounds like Marie a bit later about it, but I think right now this is one of our major things, but I'd also like to uh, continue having the um, more extensive reports on different subject areas that we've had in the past, because I think we all collectively have learned a great deal. And um, then uh, as that information gets on our website, that becomes a resource. And the third thing I'd like us to continue to focus on is the um, town hall that we have. I must admit, when it was first proposed, I was a little bit of a skeptic because I didn't know how um, many people would want to participate, but I happily, I was proven wrong. And it also seemed to touch a lot of people who weren't already linked to service providers. And I think that's why it's so important. I know we've got one scheduled for June and I hope that we continue to uh, support and perhaps even expand those forums. Great, I have one follow-up question for you. You said more extensive reports on presentations in the past. Are you looking for some of our past presenters to do updates and like drill down into specific areas? I I think both, <laughs> yes okay. and. Okay. Um, people we haven't heard from. And I think especially on the issues of transportation, which seems really thorny issue to address. And also there are a lot of changes, if I understand, going on right now in that sphere. So keeping us updated on what's happening and what people feel should happen would be helpful. Great. Thank you. Marta? Um, I have a suggestion, but I also, in case you haven't noticed, we Bruce Astrin has joined, and I didn't know if you wanted to take up the issue of voting, et cetera, um, before I make my comment. No, you make your comment. We're on a roll, and we'll we'll get we'll get back to Bruce. Okay. Um, I'm also interested in in looking at gaps in services. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is the wide divergence um, within the county of senior centers and the amount of funding that they have and the amount of support they have. So I would like to suggest that one of our goals be that we map out where the senior centers are in the county, where they get their funding from, what their budget is, and what kind of staffing they have at this time so we can have a look and determine where the gaps are in those services. That also would inform a prospective discussion about possibly having a future senior millage. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Margie? Well, you know, I agree with all those things. And I, I guess overall, I feel like um, 
were kind of a hidden group. Um, now, a lot of the things you mentioned will expose us more to the general public. But I wonder if there are ways we can, um, I think maybe through the town halls is a good way, but and maybe we need to have two of those a year. I don't know. But I don't think anybody knows we exist. And so I, I want us to work on um, putting forth um, our coalition for uh, to the public. And um, I don't know exactly how to do that, but I think it we need to work on it. I agree. I a committee in the future, Margie. What? I hear a committee in your future. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that, Margie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. Julia. That should be one of our new committees, Marie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to touch base. I was um I agree that we need to uh gather resources um in the community and maybe look at the budget and the funding and the resources that they have. But I'm finding a trend that's occurring like a lot lately that a lot of uh, seniors want to age in place, but however, if there's a health issue and then they end up in some kind of rehabilitative state and their assets are um, kind of taken, they're kind of in limbo then like, well, what do I do from that point? And I don't really have a point of referral for that. And I'm wondering if there is something in the county or if there is something that maybe if people, it's just not transportation, it's just not helping the home, but it's actually facilitating different extreme changes in their life and how to support them and mm -hmm. resources for that. I, I think because it's a very desperate place, but it's becoming common mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Do you think we need some kind of committee for that or what are you thinking? It sounds like I, a, a presentation. Um, or something. Yeah, I'm not really sure of the answer. That's why I'm so concerned. But it's really frightening um, um, to think of it, uh, that if a, if a health issue happens to a senior mm -hmm. in Washington yes. County, and then they end up in a rehabilitative state, and their assets are seized, and then they're laying in a bed saying, okay, I need somewhere to go, and they don't have family. And it's happening on a routine I'm sad to say basis mm -hmm. um, and there isn't anywhere to really point them to or to find support because everything's already overutilized. That's a good point. Uh, I've often thought about that myself for myself. You know, what, what would I do? Where do I go? Who do I contact? Mm -hmm. I, I was, I was meeting with a woman yesterday and she said, well, maybe I should just call the credit union and try to extend my limit so that I can stay another couple of weeks. But mm -hmm. it's very, um, it's very concerning and it's happening at least every 72 hours I'm getting a call. So we it's, need um, it's more prevalent right now in the middle of snowstorms and stuff. And I, I'm yeah. just concerned, um, that there's not an answer. Yeah. In my experience, um, elder law and elder financial advisors are, are the first place that I I've pointed people to. And so I'm interested in having those two groups come for presentations now to, to start us in that direction and then see what needs to happen. You know, what else do we need to learn next after that? Does that sound like a good starting point? Yes. Yes. Awesome. And, you know, Marie, there might be, um, uh, uh, practices that are our best practices in other locations that we might look into. Yeah. And maybe Elder Law knows about those. I, I'm not sure. Great. Brenda? Yeah, I like that, Phyllis. As I was saying, I thought about that for myself. What would I do? And I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the other thing I want to say is that I don't know if uh, Elizabeth said it, but the presenters that we have, we have our own website, right? Can we, as we get that information, are we, can we put that on their website? Mm -hmm. Are we doing that yet or? We do. It is often delayed because 
of lack of county resources supporting this group. Um, mm -hmm. But we do do it. Um, yeah. Okay, because as we get the information, as we're la learning, we can put that on our website and it would be available for seniors to be able to look at. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, if, if you brought that up, Elizabeth, that's a great idea and I would like to see that done. Yeah. Juliet? My, my apologies just for speaking again, <laughs> but um, I'm also concerned about um, the the weather changes in the state in our county and the seniors that don't have um assistance if a if a furnace breaks down or do we have anything listing of like warming stations or transportation that can assist them during that time or something that's weather related in a crisis for seniors yeah that's good. I know some of those exist. I don't know how updated they are. Um, and, you know, even you mentioned a, a heater breaking. What are the financial resources in the county to help with those minor or potentially major home repairs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, even, or even to sustain someone until help arrives, because during those times, of course, all the transportation stops, you know, repair people can't get out and things like that. And in those instances, uh, a senior would need somewhere to be warm or warming station. I've heard in other counties that they have, I know that our, our transportation system stopped, but I've heard in other counties, they actually have buses that go to places and they have heat on and the seniors can get in the buses and they can take them to a warming station to be mm -hmm. kept warm and to make sure that they're fed. And it's like a crisis protocol that they have within the county uh -huh. as it relates to seniors. Uh -huh. And I, I was wondering if that's something that um, we can uh, advocate for. Not a committee, of course, just. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, let's look into that. Um, Taylor. Um, I just had an idea. I don't know to what extent within the bylaws or anything, but have, we consider just doing like a Facebook page or anything for like the things that we specifically do or have information on, um, just to try to be more, instead of waiting on the county with the delays because of whatever else is going on. But at least this way, we can now communicate all of our things, the presenters, the whatever. I just don't know if it's allowed because we have the website. And then the website could just be linked to that page as well. Yeah. That, yeah. I remember we talked to um, when we first started Peter about it and there was a lot of hesitation on on um, a group like ours having our own socials that it could easily be taken advantage of to push our own agenda instead of staying in, in line with the county um, or posting inappropriate things that should have been vetted first. And so I know there was concerns around that. We can definitely ask again, though. Uh, Brenda? Yeah, I have a question for Annie. Um, is she still here? Yeah. And Annie, um, do you think that's something the county could look into for us as far as um, a warming station, um, those kind of things for seniors? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so we, we have a warming center system already in the county. It's run through the Shelter Association. Um, there is also, um, someone earlier mentioned extreme weather situations and furnace issues. We already have existing programs through the Office of Community and Economic Development. So those services exist now? Mm -hmm. Yep, and those, the number that I gave you from General Fund on Senior Services don't include all the programs that touch seniors. So there are a lot of programs in the county that primarily support folks who are lower income. A lot of those folks happen to be older adults. Is there any folks. way that we can get that information? Mm -hmm. um, the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is mapping out senior services right now, and they're okay. looking at all of those different programs. Okay. 
Yeah, and as far as the listings of the warming stations, we can get that for a upcoming meeting. They do exist. We just need to get the links and things. Yeah, they're oh. all listed on the Shelter Association's website, and there's also um, a page on the county website as well. Awesome. Elizabeth? I'd like to underscore what was mentioned early earlier on a uh, protocol for serving seniors in those emergency weather situations. I think we do have resources. People just don't know them. And it's probably beyond our scope to see ourselves as the entity that shares that information to seniors. I think mm -hmm. we could get to the same end by asking the different parts of county government, what are they doing to notify seniors? Are seniors specifically included in the outreach for their protocol and mm -hmm. things like that? And um, I think uh, having worked with the Shelter Association, uh, our church is one of the homes of uh, the uh, overnight shelters in Ypsilanti, so we've worked closely with them. I think they'd be very open to uh, responding to a question as, gee, there's this whole section of the county population that we wanna make sure can get this information and we know they're not, and how can you improve getting the word out? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe broadening the question more to what is the protocol the county has in all these different areas for reaching out to seniors. And then the next thing about the Facebook, in addition to the fact that it's really the county's call, Having maintained Facebook pages on behalf of several different organizations, I will say it can become an immensely time consuming thing to be the administrator. And it's one of those things, once you start, it's hard to stop because people expect it. And um, Taylor's great, but we're not her only job. And I would be very hesitant to try to develop a new information resource versus communicating with existing information resources and saying, hey, the word's not getting out. How can we help you do it better? Um, great. I want to hear from some of you who haven't shared any ideas yet. Jennifer Green, I'll call on you first. Jasmine, I'm going to call on you next. Um, Jennifer, is there anything that you would like us to learn or accomplish this year? Well, to kind of piggyback on what Elizabeth said as far as getting the word out, I'm also, I'm concerned about those seniors that do not use social media, do not mm -hmm. are technology, not technology yeah. savvy, that fall between the cracks of getting those services. And I do agree that, it's, that we may not be the ones to get that information to them. But as we talk to different organizations, keep making them aware of the, that fact that their they need to be more creative in how they get the information out besides using technology to those people who need it. I agree. I agree. Um, so that's my two cents. It's a whole uh, different age, yeah. Um, Jasmine and then Jennifer Heckendorn. Uh, so for me, I'd be interested in possibly conducting some type of research within the county on older adults. I know it's tricky to like leverage funds for that um, just because we are um, under like the county and then it would be like a bunch to get um, approval from the county to do that. What kind but of- I think I'd be interested. So, no, uh, the Rackman Graduate School does provide funds for students to conduct research with agencies. And so, what kind of research are you thinking? So, I was thinking probably like a survey, um, maybe like a mail a mailer survey to just different um, areas within the county to kind of figure out the like rural needs versus more like um, like low income area needs, things like that. So like just really focused on what do they need? What are they, what are they, you know, experiencing? Is that what you're talking about? 
Yeah, so a little bit of that, but also um, where communication could be better, what resources are out there that they don't know about. And then we probably could uh, couple this with like um, information on the resources that are offered. So if we were to send out the survey, possibly including in some of our uh, resources. Great. Um, Jennifer Heckendorn and then Allison. Um, so one of the things I'm interested in is uh, learning more about the needs and resources for caregivers. Um, I see a lot of caregivers in my practice and um, I think there's lack of information or resources about their needs and how to support them. And a lot of them are over 60 <laughs> that are caregiving for their spouses or parents or, or even sometimes their adult children. So that's something that I'm interested in learning about or having a presentation about if we can find some resources on that. Great. Allison and then Annie. Uh, so... I mean, I think I mostly, I agree with a lot of this stuff. I think having advocacy for us is a big part. Um, you know, the agencies have to do a lot of work on this too, but I think us having a bigger presence in the community and advocacy is going to be a bigger part. What's our place with that advocacy versus um, the agencies is, is kind of key. And also, I know what we're talking about for our goal. I also am a big supporter of the ballot proposal for the millage and um, would be supportive of doing that. In my current role where I work at, we actually get a lot of our additional funding from levy millage funding. So um, I, I that gets back to the piece that we brought up of sustainability. Um, so there are plenty of county, other counties we can go to and say, what kind of um, results has that had for sustainability? So even that we can figure out what some sustainability looks like based on other counties that have had millages for a while. Awesome. Annie and then Bruce. Um, I don't have anything to add that folks have not already said. I'm looking forward to the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation finishing up their mapping process. Mm -hmm. um, I think that will help um, give the county some direction on next steps on a number of things. Great. We have a timeline when that might actually be done. Anybody know off the top of their head? Um, I know he was hoping soon. That's the last I've heard. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, Bruce? Thank you, um, and I'm pleased to be joining the group. Um, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time. I've been doing it for over five decades. So I think I have two quick observations and I'll be happy to talk with people in between meetings and see what I can do uh, to be as helpful as possible. But one observation is that there is a lot going on and it's just unclear where the resources and where the progress is. And it's, there isn't an issue that people have mentioned today that there isn't some kind of interest in or activity in. Um, and this is just going over a review of the council, of the commission efforts over the last couple of years, the county's efforts, the various cities' efforts. Um, so there's a lot that is already going on. We just need to be tuned into it and part of it in, a, in ways that we um, can make a difference. Secondly, um, there are some really significant issues. Uh, people have touched on them, long-term care, um, just the, the challenges financially of anybody, lower middle income populations are just not gonna be able to deal with the future, <laughs> frankly, of aging. Mm -hmm. um, so my feeling is that um, there's a lot we can do. I think we need to bring a sense of urgency to this work. Um, I would like to be a part of that as much as I can. And like I said, I, I've been doing this for a long time and I've touched on just about every issue. Um, I've worked on family policy. I've worked on poverty. I've worked on civil rights issues. I've worked on uh, any number of things, but especially a lot of work on aging and intergenerational work. And um, I think we have a real opportunity and I'm excited to be part of that. We are excited to have you here, Bruce. You are representing District 8? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, 
at the beginning, and I apologize that you had difficulty getting onto our meeting today. We we discussed that earlier in the meeting. Um, there is no one from the county to um, swear you in today. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking you to participate in discussion, but we're not going to be asking you to vote today um, because you're not officially sworn in. Do you have any questions about that? No, that's fine. Awesome. Thank you so much. And District 8 is where, Marie? Um, let me look at my map. District 8 is like this like near Packer. of Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor? Yeah. 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 It's like, so if you look at Ann Arbor surrounded by all the highways, the center strip is uh, District 8. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Marta. Um, I'd be interested in um, continuing to talk about whether we would uh, encourage the county to become an ERPH friendly community. <clears throat> I'd like to add, have that on our list of goals to consider that possibility for this, you know, think about that for this year. Yeah, great. Margie? Um, yes, I wonder if Bruce could give us a little back of his background. We We don't know you, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, care to share more? Sure, I'll try to do it briefly. Um, I was born in Detroit, raised in Michigan, went to the University of Michigan in the late 60s and um, got my undergraduate work there and a master's in education. Um, I actually worked, my last job before I left the state of Michigan was working for the Washtenaw Intermediate School District, where I work with all 10 communities in Washtenaw County on programs for young children who are adjudicated. So I work with the schools, with health centers, uh, uh, social services, and families to help come up with programs for working with adjudicated youth. Um, I have, I left uh, Michigan in the mid-1970s. I've worked in government. I've run two national nonprofit organizations, one that supports public education and one that supports public libraries. I've also worked in philanthropy for a number of years, um, and I worked in three different governments, um, none in Michigan, but I was in two different state governments, one in New York, working um, on policies for children and families. Um, and I'm currently a senior fellow at an organization, a national organization in Washington called Generations United which is about a 40 year old organization that works to support younger and older populations. And um, Generations United is a wonderful resource for intergenerational um, activity. Um, I'm currently also a consultant with the Ypsilanti uh, Senior Center working with Monica Prince. And we're doing a lot of work there to address, begin addressing some of the issues that um, folks on the on the commission have already been touching on everything from what does it really mean to age in place and what are the kinds of ways that we can reach people, health needs assessments, all of those things. So I think everybody's, you know, identifying the right issues. And there's actually, uh, the last thing I'll say is, as I was getting ready to join the board and I was just looking over things, there really is a lot to build on. We just have to figure out how to sort of get the resources to do that work but um, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and keep working at it. Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you. Um, one that I have on on my list that I, I want us to spend some time focusing on is also the senior millage. Um, we've heard from um, a couple of the commissioners that they want to be bringing forward millages to the Board of Commissioners to consider transportation, veterans, um, and the senior millage. And so as the Commission on Aging, the time has really come for us to make a formal recommendation on the senior millage. Um, today, I want to have a little bit more discussion, especially since we have some new people with us, on what information or assurances you need in order to vote in favor of the senior millage of making that recommendation to the board of commissioners um and then in march we i hope that we can make an official vote to, to make that happen um and so 
I first want, I know one of the things that we had talked about the last couple of years is that we really wanted to know where the county spending was on senior services. Um, and Annie provided that to us. She mentioned it a little bit earlier too, but um, just looking over the numbers that were given before, um, the general fund provided about 63,000 in support of the foster grandparent program for the 22-23 program year. Um, they're projecting none to minimal of general fund support to the senior nutrition program. All of that program is, is really passed through funds. Um, and then overall, both programs received support from the federal allocation. Um, and so not not necessarily general fund dollars. Annie, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. I I don't the commissioners aren't putting up a transportation millage. I don't I don't think there's a transportation millage being considered at this time from anyone. Um there's veterans, parks and recreation. Um you might be thinking of the roads, the county roads commission millage. That's probably what I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to clarify because we just approved a new um, transportation millage in 2022. But the parks millage is a renewal. Every right. millage that we'll be considering this year, aside from um, a senior millage, is a renewal. Um, right. Mental health and public safety is needs to be renewed this year. Um, yes. So these are all, we don't have any new millages, just renewals. Except for the senior millage. That would exactly. Be Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we're doing with general fund, Marie, is a foster grandparent, the yes. 63000 and the senior nutrition is passed through state um, and federal funding. Let me look at the notes one more time. It looks like the county also had general fund administrative match uh, last year, last fiscal year for the senior nutri nutrition program, and that was 30000 So in total, it was 90000 for last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I would not be ready to vote on whether or not to support a senior millage until I know um, more details about uh, the countywide services to seniors that exist now. Mm -hmm. um, there are two parts to that in my mind. One part is knowing um, about county programs that touch seniors. Um, but another one um, is about, um, oh my goodness, I just had a brain fade, um, it is knowing more about the various senior centers in the county and what sort of funding they have, that request that I made earlier. Those mm -hmm. two things I would need to have more details about. And I wonder if, since the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is already working on exploring some of these issues, that whether it's premature to take a vote on whether or not to support it until we find out what they come up with in terms of what's already out there. Those are some of my concerns. Good Great. point, good point. I'll talk to Chris and see if they'll be ready to do a presentation to us um, in March. Um, the time is not really on our side um, when it comes to some of this because if, if it's going to move forward this year, um, we need to be able to make a vote um, by March as a recommendation so the county has time to do what they need to get it on the ballot. Um, but I hear- They want to put it on the ballot. Wait, 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 nope, nope, sorry. Um, Marta, I heard you say that you want to know about countywide senior services and what touches seniors and so that's beyond those budget numbers that we've gotten from annie you're looking for what senior services exist in the county or what does the county office provide i'm looking for just take an example the office mm -hmm. for community and economic development has a um home weatherization program within okay. the county how many seniors are being served as a as a proportion of the county already so I can look at let's say um, you know they're spending five percent of their funds on senior uh, weatherization seen, weatherization of homes owned by seniors 
Mm -hmm. but actually the population of seniors that own homes in the county is 20%, then we know that they're underserved. Um, gotcha. you know, that kind of information, uh, the same with the, uh, um, I, I don't know if I can call out all the different parts of the county that have programs that would touch on seniors, but I, I would yeah. like to have information. That, and that example was really helpful. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, I see your hand next. Yeah, first in, in response to the, the data collection, while that is would be very interesting on all the different programs that the county has, who among the people they served in the last fiscal year meet that uh, criteria of being age 60 or above, I think that that is a important yet time consuming Task to get that information. Um, I think it would be good to pursue that, but I'm not sure we can have that in advance, you know, in the next three weeks. And just to underscore, because of the changes in when um, uh, voting takes place and the length of terms of commissioners, and Annie, please leap in and correct me if I'm wrong. The term for county commissioners has changed from two years to four years. This is how Justin Hodge, my commissioner, explained it to me, which means that we are going to have fewer countywide elections. They will be linked to presidential elections. Thus, it and the law is that if the county calls for an election, it has to help support the cost of an election, which means if you're having a special election, all those costs, it becomes pretty costly to carry out an election, would be borne by the county. It's really not feasible financially wise for the county to call special elections apart from elections that are already in the election schedule. So that's my understanding why there's some time urgency. We either, just explained it to me, those renewals and um, new millages, if, if proposed, will need to happen every four years. So if it doesn't get on the ballot this year, prudent financial considerations would mean it wouldn't get looked again until four years from now. So that's why there's some time urgency. And Annie hasn't leapt in, so I guess I didn't do a terrible job of explaining that. She's so next anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's... So there's, there's a time uh, urgency. I'm wondering in terms of the need for inform more information, given that we've got this time urgency, I'm wondering, one, if we could ask the Ann Arbor Community Foundation before our March meeting if there are any general learnings they have that they'd be willing to share with us in written form as just an, an overview that would help us know the information that they're gathering and the direction they're going. Two, and I'd be willing to be on a subcommittee, I think it's pretty, would be pretty easy to make phone calls and gather that data about senior centers, because I think it's basically a phone call and asking for data from their last annual report. Mm -hmm. And then third, I know Allison asked about the experience in other similar counties in Michigan. And the first year of the commission, we did uh, do some intensive research on uh, finding out what other counties do. I will share with Marie the brief summary we shared that we can share again. Mm -hmm. But to summarize it, um, similar counties to us, um, Kalamazoo, Kent, and Ingham either have had, have recently, recently within the last five or six years, passed senior millages, um, and Monroe County. Mon Monroe County has had one for years. They expanded it about four years ago. All four counties administer the money differently because of their different arrangements. Ingham County, the Air Agency on Aging, is part of county government, which is different from us. Uh, 
Monroe works with their community action agency to administer funding. Uh, Kalamazoo is just getting started, but both Kalamazoo and Kent have a couple people with new positions they created in county government to administer the funding and be a touch point for information sharing about all the senior services in the county. So they have little offices on aging. They unanimously, all the county said it enabled them to meet needs they were not able to meet before. Ingham County expanded their uh, Meals on Wheels programs uh, and hired uh, case managers to help direct seniors to available services. Uh, Monroe, and they also expanded their home repair weatherization and modification programs to allow seniors to stay at home by doing home repairs that were necessary and building ramps and other accommodations that needed to be made. Monroe's uh, has a home variety of funding, but they said their biggest, some of their biggest expansion was transportation and home modifications. Uh, Kent put a lot of money into transportation, um, but also uh, case management. Uh, and Kalamazoo would just get the, um, uh, was just beginning to get the money when we talk to them. And certainly we can try to do a reach out to them. Another thing to remember about a millage is how millages work. You don't get the money right away. You authorize it. Then you have to wait until the following fiscal year for the uh, property taxes to come in and then the money gets allocated. So the funding does not happen right away. The good part about that is it gives you about a year for some really good planning on how it's going to be administered. So as I said, I'll send the brief summary about county millages to be distributed that we did, it's not updated, but hopefully that gives you a sense about what our subcommittee did. Wonderful. Annie? Just to clarify, um, I think one thing that Justin didn't consider when he talked to you, Elizabeth, is that we have house, state house um, of representative elections every two years, um, ah, everywhere in the county. So we would also be able to put up millages. Um, in fact, we're probably going to break up some of the ones that need to be renewed rather than putting all of them on the ballot together at one time this year because of that. So um, the one thing that I would say to people who are either for or not um, yet decided on a millage is that you could also spend the time um, just coming up with recommendations on what the gaps are and what you would want the county to be funding. And that would also help give the commissioners an idea of where we would need to find money in the general fund or put up a millage. So that's my recommendation. Um, that way you all, all aren't, um, especially the people who want to see the mapping, you can still do that work and make those recommendations without being for or against a millage. Um, the purpose, you know, one of the purposes of this commission is to make those types of recommendations to us. So I would say you could focus it around that and, and how much money you'd like to see per year on a, a specific area. Great. Um, Phyllis. Thank you for the correction. I'll amend my remarks because uh, no, Justin and I didn't discuss representative things. So it's every two years. It, would that be correct? that we can do a millage. And I'd also like to mention we have made not specific dollar amounts, but in our annual reports each year, we make recommendations about the areas in which um, money should be spent. Do Are you suggesting we add more specificity? Like we think this program should get X amount. Yeah, my recommendation would be that you get more specific and yeah, my recommendation would be that you get more specific. And if you could even find areas where 
you know, you can make recommendations on areas that we're funding currently that you don't think we should be and say, pull the money from this. Um, thanks, Elizabeth, for all that background um, and the work that was done before. I, I really appreciate hearing that. Um, I keep thinking about all the senior agencies that have um, had to spend money and time and staff hours going after money to fund the services that they already do and already know that there are needs. Um, and I think that having a, a millage to provide sustainable funds that they can depend on would make a huge difference in the ability of those agencies to get the word out to people who need the services. Um, that was one of the uh, comments that I heard earlier that people don't know. And, and having worked in this area for 40, 50 years, I know that no people don't look for senior services until they needed it yesterday. So we, we can publicize all we want about weatherization of your home or where you can get Meals on Wheels, but if they don't need it, they don't pay attention to it. So if we, if this, the, we have wonderful agencies that work so hard um, in this county. And I think they, it, it, with, um, I, I went to the transportation summit and there is transportation available on a lot of efforts put, being put in place for people who, who live in rural areas and they live there for their reasons. They, it, so, you know, we pay, everything's a, a toss up of where we choose to live, what is, um, what's available. Um, I know that see, having worked in senior centers for, uh, in the past, I know that um, there's always scrambling for, for funding. Um, and it depends on what people want in those times. I remember my grandmother at 88 saying, I'm not going to the senior center, it's for old people. So it doesn't matter how many people you've got who live in an area who are a certain age, they may or may not want to take advantage of what's there. So I, I just um, know that there have been people working toward a millage for that I've I believe at least five years they have they have um, uh, a proposal worded out um, and it they could work together with our commission on aging so that we're all working at the same toward the same goal and not spinning wheels and wasting wasting time if it's possible to get it on the ballot for november we have if we decide to do that to make that recommendation we we're not in control of the timeline and i think we have to pay attention to that and um uh, do what we have to do in a timely way. Yeah, so, so what I hear you. you saying um, is you would like, as far as um, what information or assurances that you would want to see in order to feel conf more confident in voting, yes, is that we would collaborate with some of the work say us to seniors has been doing. 
Mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful. Great. Bruce? Um, actually, uh, Annie made my main point quite well just a few minutes ago that I think we need to really do both. I think we need to work on the millage in any number of ways. And I think we need to um, continue to gather the necessary information um, to get a better overall sense. Uh, the one thing I would I would add to that is um, aging and services for aging are not only for older people. Um, what we put in place now benefits families right down the, you know, multi-generations. And it also will be more available and hopefully more robust when other people start to get older. Everybody's aging. <laughs> and I think we just need to tell a story that goes along with the millage in order to really make that point to the community, to the all the communities, because um, it's a very powerful story. It's a story that touches just about every family. There isn't a family who isn't wrestling with some aspect of this. So I would just say we need to be doing both the, the whatever is necessary to get the millage, get those resources, and continue to work on, you know, working with the community to get the community voice informed and engaged and working on the general funds so that more resources are available both to get out to families, but also to do the work that we have in front of us. We need more resources to do this work because it's important to the whole county. Thank you, Bruce. Marta? Um, part of what I would need also is to have a very specific statement of what we're asking for and how the funds would be spent. So that we're not just saying, you know, globally, let's just have a senior millage and let's raise X amount of money. But what what were we are we recommending be done with those funds? I would need to know that in order to decide whether I could support the request. Great, thank you, Brenda. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to comment on. Um, what I've always been trying to get is like how much and. I'll go back a little bit. Marta mentioned weatherization. 5% of the people were served. I'd like to know in some of these organizations, how much goes to staffing and how much actually goes to seniors. 5% uh, of seniors, that isn't very many people. That was just an illustration. It wasn't yeah. I know, but that, that was a good yeah. example for me. Um, I don't think it would... I mean, Marta did ask for, you know, what's going to the senior centers at, um, and how, you know, what funds are they getting? What are their staffing? I hesitate to put too much emphasis on, on staffing. It takes people to serve people. And when we're looking at older adult services, it often takes a lot more resources and people time, staff time to get that work done. Um, and so I think we should be really careful around some of that conversation. It takes people to serve people. Um, Phyllis and then Allison, and just a really quick time check. It's almost 1030. Um, we have a little bit left in our agenda after this. So if people could make their last comments brief, that would, that would be helpful in finishing our agenda on time. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to, to mention the um this the say yes to seniors is offering a conversation about a senior millage in washington county um on friday march 1st at the ipsy senior center so we hope that you all will attend or and tell people you know to attend. This is a good place to ask questions and to get information. Um, there, the, um, there's a, a flyer that, that can be uh, sent. Taylor, are you able to send it to people? Yeah, go ahead and send it to me and I can send it out. Okay, great. Um, so I we just want you to know it's um, 
from 2 to 3.30 on Friday, March 1st. Um, there will be refreshments, of course, and um, a brief presentation and lots of time for questions and answers. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Allison? Uh, thanks for everyone's comments. These are all really great insights. I I really, really do kind of agree with like everyone from the perspective, while we need to get more data, we do have to keep moving forward. And I am supportive of that. I will help any way I can for this. But as a person who has was on the other side of this, we have been advocating for a senior millage for far more than five years, actually. it's It's been actually closer to eight or nine years. Um, and every time we get to a place, it's, I, I and I don't mean this to be um, just really blunt, but I don't want us to be like perfection to be the enemy of good. You know, like we're never gonna get all the data. We know there's need. We can make good recommendations. I would also urge you, reach out to the nonprofits, like the ones that are starting older, older adults, intergenerational. They want to share this information with us. They want to be a part of this. If we really all set our minds to this, we could get the information we need to feel confident in what we're placing for it. And even when it gets on the ballot for a vote, we still have a year to get everything finalized and to get those quality details in there. So I think we all need to basically look at this as we have a lot of good data. It seems like we all know there's needs and there's gaps. And so I would urge us to really do have this sense of urgency to start working on the millage wording. It's There's some out there and then to get it to a way where we feel comfortable with making that movement forward to the commissioners. And I will help whatever way I can. Thank you. Any other comments on this discussion, specifically any information or assurances you need um, between now and our next meeting? Great, great. Um, this is nested under the bigger discussion of 2024 goals. Any last comments, things you'd like to see happen, things to learn about in 2024? Awesome. Great. Um, for the sake of time, are you, is everyone okay skipping our little five minute break? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Awesome. For adults, if you need, you need to take a break, if you need to do a bio break, you just take care of yourself. Um, so the next thing we have on here is um, subcommittee discussions. Last year, we had a subcommittee on communications. We had a subcommittee on ARPA, a subcommittee on the potential millage, a subcommittee on moving forward future planning, and then a subcommittee on town hall. So that's five. Um, I wanna start with ARPA actually. Th that uh, big push that ARPA subcommittee was doing was really focused on first getting the board of commissioners to allocate ARPA funds to senior services and then, um, and then you know, trying to connect senior services with applying to to those funds. And so that's kind of really wrapped up the, the big push that we had there. So um, I'm, I would suggest that we consider sunsetting the ARPA subcommittee. Um, and I'm looking to the subcommittee members, how you feel about that. We had Margie, Elizabeth, Marta, Jennifer Heckendorn, and Jennifer Green on that. I agree. Give me some nods. Okay, great. Um, Bruce, what comments do you have on that? Just a quick comment. Um, given the Ypsilanti Senior Center is one of the ARPA recipients, it would be really, I think, useful if we could find at least a time in 2024 for the ARPA folks to share what they're doing a little bit more. I love that. Yep. I'm going to put that under our goals. I uh, Somebody mentioned that earlier, too. And I think it's it it would be a good wrap up for that group to have a report 
from those who receive funds. Yeah. Great. Um, all right, so it sounds like we're all on board with sunsetting the ARPA subcommittee. I don't think that needs a vote. Nope. Okay, good. Uh, I mean, yeah, it doesn't need a vote. I'm confident about that. <laughs> um, all right, so up next, uh, let's talk about the communications subcommittee. Um, on that one, we had Elizabeth, Marta, Jennifer Heckendorn, Jennifer Green, and Jasmine Cooper. Um, I guess first, we should talk about the goals of the, the communications subcommittee for this year. And then we'll ask if those of you who have been on it want to stay on it. Um, and if anyone else wants to join. <laughs> so some things that I heard um, from our discussion earlier around communications is trying to find ways to get more awareness of our group out there, the, the work that this commission body is doing. I heard that we want more information about services available in the county to be communicated with seniors. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, occasional presentations that are requested. Um, I know Marta has gone to the senior centers and the senior center directors to do those presentations in the past. And then finally, um, email communications that, that come in. Is there anything I'm missing from that communications subcommittee? Looking at you, subcommittee members, the work that you did. I covered it. The, se the senior town hall, we worked a lot on uh, getting that information out there and, and we'll want to do that again this year, I'm sure. Great. Yeah. So sort of supporting some of the other subcommittees and getting information out. Okay, great. Yeah, Bruce. Just a quick question. I'm, I don't know if it falls under the communication subcommittee or not, but um, is there any way to get more information, a um, little more consumer friendly onto our website. Um, the website is, is not the most, um, you know, easy to work with and tool. And I think if it was even some way without running into a lot of costs to, as part of the overall communications question, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, um, we have some requirements by the county to use their current website and, and have our information nested in that. And so there are some limitations there. Um, but I think that this subcommittee can definitely be talking more with the county um, people's, probably specifically Ashley, on what can be improved. How can we do that? We talked earlier about the potential social media involvement, if that's something that we want to um, ask Ashley about. Um, yeah, all of that would fall under them for sure. Um, so first, I guess I'll ask communications, um, who, who, who is, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to just think on the fly on how I want to phrase the question, but, um, current members, anyone want to step off of communications? Are you all happy with participating in that many? Great. Um, I believe our quorum is five. Is that correct? It's going to be seven with the two more. Or Marta has something. Yeah, Marta? I think it's six is the max you can have on a committee because okay. seven is the quorum. Okay. So right now it's Elizabeth, Marta, Jennifer Heckendorn, Jennifer Green, and Jasmine. So there is room for one more. No, wait. We're allowed one more, right? Yeah, we're allowed one more because seven would be for them. Um, so is there anyone else who would like to join that subcommittee? You certainly don't have to, um, but you are welcome to. Great. You can always change your mind later. 
Um, next up, we'll talk about the town hall subcommittee. Um, that subcommittee last year put together our first ever senior town hall, um, talked about scams, had some resources, uh, got Debbie Dingle to come, which is awesome. Um, on that town hall subcommittee last year was Brenda, Jennifer Heckendorn, myself, and Margie. Um, I will need to step off of those meetings. I'm happy to support in whatever way I can, but um, I'm going to step off of town halls. Um, anyone else want to st step off? Can I, can I? Can yeah, I do Brenda. my report? Yeah. Can I do my report now, or are you gonna go back to that? Um, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Yeah. Oh, I can't give my report, or yeah, or you want to? Pardon? I want to talk about who's going to be on it going forward, and then we'll when we finish the subcommittee assignments, then I'll have you do your report. So hold on to your update. Um, all right, so anyone else want to help with the town hall? I'll continue chairing it. Great. And how many people do we have on it now? Um, so you have three. You have room for three more. If anyone else would like to join. Maybe Bruce might like to. Um, I... <laughs> I was planning to join maybe one or a couple of the other ones, but I would be willing to at least talk with you about it. Okay. Do we have your email address, Bruce, and that information? We will soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This gets posted on public stuff, so I don't want him to say it right now. Um, all right, so we have three on the town hall, Brenda, Jennifer Heckendorn, and Margie. If anyone else would like to join in the future, you're more than welcome to, but that's who we'll have recorded for this subcommittee currently. Um, next up is potential millage. We had myself, um, Phyllis, Brenda, Juliet, and Jasmine on that subcommittee. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay on it. Phyllis, did you want to stay on it? Great. Brenda, did you want to stay on this one or are you going to step off? I'll step off. Right. Um, Juliet, did you want to stay on this one or step off? Oh, did we lose Juliet? We did. Um, Jasmine. Did we lose Jasmine too? Yep. I'm awesome both. Okay. Anyone else? would like to join this subcommittee. We have room officially for two and we can check with Juliet and Jasmine if they jump back on. Um, I'm, I'm, that would, that's one of the ones I would be willing to join, sure. Great, great. Anyone else, room for one more? And then finally, we have the moving forward slash future planning subcommittee. Um, really, we had potential millage meshed with future planning because of some of the things that were happening countywide. It made sense for us just to be having those discussions in tandem. I think now with the millage potentially moving forward, um, the moving forward future planning subcommittee can really be focused on um, what needs exist, you know, who may want to, um, what gaps are in the county and, and looking at some of those things. That was myself, Phyllis, Brenda, Juliet, and Margie. Um, I am interested in staying on. Phyllis, would you like to stay on that one or step, step off? You're going you're to stay on. Yeah, I'd like to stay on that. Okay. Brenda, would you like to stay on or step off? I'll stay on. Great. Uh, Juliet's not here. Margie? You're going to stay on? 
great. So one, two, three, four, five. No, wait, one, two, three, yeah, four, five. So we have room officially for one more person. Elizabeth, I see your hand up. Yeah, um, it seems like uh, Brenda doesn't have a lot of people to work on the event. And so I would be happy to move from communications to work in the town hall. Okay. Great. Anyone else interested in future planning? I'd like to, I'd be interested in being on that one. Awesome. I'd be interested, but if we can't, if that's too many, I can certainly offer. Yeah, I'll put your name down and I'll check with, I'll check with Juliet. Um, yeah. And then I can, I'll step off that one and you can participate, Bruce. Well, yeah, I don't want to force anybody off, but I, I would be interested if we could work it out. Yeah. Marie? Yeah. I, you were talking about getting off of moving forward, future planning. I did. I did say that. I'm um, getting off it. You know, I, I think that it, you're being the chair uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that you are on that. Um, we have our vice chair, Brenda, still on it. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think that's good. We will have our um, officer meetings and she can bring forward things that you guys talk about. Okay. I, I just think it's important that we keep those two you know, the officers together on that. Okay. Board. Yeah, I hear you. <clears throat> all right. Um, all right. Any additional subcommittees you, anyone feels like we should entertain? Can I was just going to say, can they be proposed throughout the year? Mm -hmm. Yep. I was going to say that they can definitely be brought up throughout the year as there's, as there's a need, we can definitely make those as we go. Right. Can we get um, some dates and times of these meetings? Or do um, they we'll they have, vary? you know what, we're going to have uh, Taylor send out uh, a follow-up communication after this meeting that will have who's on each of these and then okay. each group can be responsible for coordinating that on your on your own. Um, okay. Because we only have 15 minutes left, it probably isn't gonna be efficient for us to do that during the meeting. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Great. Um, okay, so next on our agenda is the report from the Board of Commissioners. And so Annie, do you have anything you'd like to share? I think everything that I would have shared, I've already been able to filter into all the discussion. So unless anybody has any questions, I will um, just pass it on for time. Great. Any questions, anyone for Annie? Great. Uh, up next is the report from the chair and we'll start with the outgoing chair. Marta, um, any updates you would like to provide? Yeah, I did a presentation at the all senior all all season senior living community on uh, January eighth, uh, highlighting the work that we've done at the Commission on Aging, and I think there were about twenty people that came, um, and um, there were there was a lot of questions, and um, they were uniformly unaware of the work of the. Um, Commission on Aging, and I invited them to start coming to meetings. I have no idea if any of them are here today, but um, I think when we were earlier talking about presentations and getting the word out, I think this is one way to do that is to reach out to the, all the senior living communities in the county and offer to make presentations, at least to the um, within the limits of what we have to offer in terms of time commitments. But um, you know, I think that we'll, we'll have, you know, the communications committee can take that up as a possibility, but that's the only thing I have to report. 
Great. Thank you. Um, the only thing that I have to report is that we were invited to give our annual report to the County Board of Commissioners on March 20th. Uh, Marta and I plan to do that together. Um, and I'm realizing that I promised Brenda that we would move back to subcommittee updates. So I wanna just take us back for a hot second. Brenda, we can start with you. Um, what town hall updates do you have? Well, first of all, I just wanna say that um, I'm making a lot of progress. Um, the, the event is going to be at the Chelsea Senior Center on June 14th at 1 p.m. And for the record, the address is 512 East Washington Street, Chelsea, Michigan. The zip code is 48118. And they have plenty of resource tables and chairs for us to use. If we can use the flyer that we did, we used last year and just change the address and I'm going to meet with the committee to come up with some topics to be discussed. And if any of the members, the committee members here, have any topics that you want discussed for us to put on the flyer, I would really appreciate it. I would like to try to get the flyer out to different community centers and organizations in April. And I don't know if you still have, you did the flyer. Last I did year. the flyer. Yeah, I'm pulling it open right now and I'm going to share it with uh, Jennifer because I know she uses Canva. That's where I made it. Great. Um, potential millage and moving forward. Um, I was chairing those. We um, talked about most of the updates that, that I'm aware of. We weren't able to have a meeting the last month, and maybe even the month before. I do have a meeting with Chris Lemon from the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation this afternoon. And so I'm hoping to find out what his timeline is for the release of their information. Um, he and I have already chatted about, um, you know, moving some of this potential millage stuff forward and what information he has already collected that he's willing to, to give to us to kind of keep it moving forward regardless of the timeline for their final product. Um, and then communications, any updates from the communication committee? No. Awesome. Great, so item um, 11, new business. I do not have any new business for us at this time. Um, anyone else want to bring up new business items? Nope. Great. I will say that I'll take the conversation we had earlier about 2024 goals and I'll make it into something um, smaller, more digestible for, and I'll bring it to our next meeting so you guys can see that and make comments on it. Um, our next meeting is March 1st, the first Friday in March at 9 a.m. Uh, Bruce, I see your hands up. I was just curious about, um, people have mentioned, and I saw pre from previous discussions, the uh, age-friendly, making Washington County an age-friendly county, does that fall under any particular um, subcommittee or is that still new business? Um, I just didn't know where that goes. Yeah, that's a great question. Does anyone have thoughts on that? Moving forward. Um, so yeah, my, my gut reaction is that in order to actually have that AARP age-friendly community stuff happen. We need participation from all of the townships and municipalities and county government, um, the Parks and Rec, the Roads Commission, and things like that. So I think it is um, a bigger, a much bigger project and it would, if we want to move forward with it, would be its own subcommittee. 
for sure. Um, I think, I don't know, do you all want to have more discussion on that next meeting if, if there's time in the agenda on, on what that looks like? Do you want to have somebody from AARP come back and, and refresh us all on that information? That would be nice. Okay. The one thing I just quickly add, um, I know that the state is one of a handful of states that's an age has declared an age friendly state. There is, as just as you mentioned, criteria you have to meet, mm -hmm. um, and there's a number of cities um, or towns that have also in Michigan, but there isn't a county. So it would be an interesting opportunity to sort of leapfrog Washtenaw over some of the other counties that are a little bit ahead of us on things if we could meet those criteria. And it would also speak to a lot of the, some of the communications issues that we're talking about. It would be a, a different way to promote aging countywide. But um, anyways, I think it's worth exploring. Yeah, yeah, Marta? I think I agree with what Bruce said. And I also think it would be worthwhile to ask AARP to identify other counties that have done age-friendly community projects. So we can um, find out Maybe we can sort of steal some of their ideas. I don't think a county has done it. Not in Michigan, but maybe. Not in Michigan. In Michigan. California, counties did. And I believe in New York State, I might have that mixed up with Pennsylvania, the state government provided funding for that. Okay. So it might be worth getting a report from some other county to find out exactly what's included yeah i like that anything else for me we do not need a motion to adjourn i think we can just all do the thumbs up right is that what we did what we do i'd just like to say thank you to the outgoing officers and also to the incoming officers for taking on the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think you need a motion, uh, Marie, to adjourn, but you don't need to take a roll call vote. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll make, make a motion to adjourn. I'll support that. Thumbs up, everyone. Or, yep. Great. Good job, Marie. Awesome. Thank you all. We'll see you in March. Yeah. Maybe not sooner. <laughs>